I mean, it's like the lithium, say it's been in my phone and you guys refine it. How many times can that happen? Can this just keep going on and on and on? <laughs> there, there's, no tip, there's no real limit to it. There's no degradation that happens to those atoms of lithium or cobalt or nickel. And it's one of the coolest things about this is that those metals are basically infinitely recyclable. How much lithium that's been used in here would you guys be able to recover? Like, what's the reuse percentage? On Almost all like of that? it. You know, lithium, maybe more than 80%, you know, nickel, 95, 98%, same with cobalt um, and copper. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty complete process. Redwood gets devices, takes out the batteries, and then begins breaking them down into their elemental parts. This is largely done through heat, serious heat, which is why these spacemen are needed. They're using an oven to create what is basically metal magma, which then goes into a tub and is stirred with a rake. Because why not? Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In this video, we're discussing battery recycling, specifically taking a look at Redwood Materials, the company founded in 2017 by JB Strawwall, an electric vehicle OG, a man who spent 15 years at Tesla. So in this video, I'm playing some clips from a recent Bloomberg Quick Takes documentary featuring Ashley Vance. If the name Ashley Vance sounds familiar, that's because he authored the Elon Musk biography in 2014, maybe 2015, which is one of the best books I've ever read. Not because it features content regarding Elon Musk, but because of how incredibly insightful and important it is for me as a Tesla stock investor to get the insights into the mindset, the thinking, the values, the determination, the drive, and the ambition of its CEO, Elon Musk. So if you own Tesla stock and you haven't already read this book, that wasn't very smart, was it? But hey, you can fix the error of your ways. There's a link in the description. You guys can listen to the book for free with the new Audible trial. Otherwise, borrow it from a friend, get it from a library, buy a copy, I don't care. But please read the book. It's critically important if you own Tesla stock to understand the thinking of the man steering the ship. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, yes, one, two, three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $60. $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. There's a link in the description to the full documentary, by the way, guys. And just FYI, if you're not super interested in JB and Tesla's background story, then you can skip to this timestamp and get straight into the Redwood Materials battery recycling content. From Reno, we headed south to Carson City. Well, like the outermost edge of Carson City, where an old friend is engineering a most unique existence. Today, we're a little bit outside of Carson City, Nevada, going to the house of J.B. Straubel. He's a guy I've known for a long time. He was one of the first employees at Tesla and uh, the longtime chief technology officer. I always thought of him as, as the heart and soul of Tesla because he was this guy who, even before Tesla was a real thing, he was obsessed with solar-powered cars, with taking lithium ion batteries and using them to one day reshape the automotive industry. He was kind of the dreamer behind the technology in the whole electric car revolution. A couple years ago, he decided he was gonna go out on his own and start a new company around recycling all these lithium ion batteries that he helped create. We're gonna learn a little bit more about his life and then we're gonna go see his new factory as well. What is that Model 3? Yeah, looks like it. Oh, there's another. There's one three. Tesla, two Tesla. Three in the back. Hey guys, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for letting us do all this. JB started coming out here as Tesla began building its massive Gigafactory battery plant. Year by year, the charms of Nevada grew on him, and he decided to stop living in hotels and take over this fine compound. Over the years, Elon Musk has gotten all of the Tesla love and adoration. Meanwhile, JB quietly did his thing in the background. Always a tinkerer and engineer at heart, he spearheaded many of Tesla's key projects before leaving the company in 2019. It really, I just fell in love with it. And it, it you know, was such a fun project that just felt like it had to be done. You know, I saw no one else doing it and wanted to throw myself into it. And in those days, Southern California was kind of, you know, the mecca for, you know, the early stages of electro, electric cars and batteries. So it was a good place to be. You end up with 
this guy Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening they want to make an, an all electric sports car. You've got Elon down in LA. He, he's also kind of interested in this idea and happens to have a lot of money. And um, and eventually these forces combine and then and then you're right there at the very beginning as well. There's some of the best times, you know, thinking back on it, but it, it also, you know, we had no idea what we were up against, you know, and, and trying to imagine what it would become. Um, I mean, it was just a handful of people, you yeah. know, and, you know, no one had ever tried this stuff before. And, and that was the beginning of, you know, how we started to understand large format batteries and how to architect the safety of, of that. And so then that was the challenge, right? I mean, was you guys were worried about obviously fires and, and then like how you cool these things and there were explosions in the, the neighborhood. And <laughs> well, it was, it was a lot of trial and error. I mean, we, we were fearless and we just, you know, plunge into this and, you know, knowing that somehow we'd figured this stuff out. But uh, yeah, I mean, that we kind of built it off the experience that came out of even those earliest solar car experiments but scaled it way up yeah. and had you know, the support of a growing engineering team and, and uh, you know, more and more interest and focus to really you know, create what became you know, the Roadster. Well, this is, a, this is a really old Roadster. This was actually one of our uh, first uh, engineering prototypes. Engineering prototype five is what we called it. So a little bit before we started series production. You know, years ago, we refurbished it and uh, I sort of collected this thing and have taken care of it since. I believe it's the oldest Tesla that's on the road still. Does it give you like PTSD <laughs> or, or only fond no, memories? Well, at only, this point? only fond memories. It's it's a great thing to you know get in there and remember what EVs were you know were like not that long ago, and it's yeah. incredible how fast the development has happened. These days, JB is all about batteries and what we should do with them. He left Tesla to start Redwood Materials. At its heart, it's a battery recycling company. But looked at another way. It's sort of like a lithium or nickel mine, just in reverse. Mining in reverse is actually a great way to describe this process. Obviously, rather than going to the earth and mining out materials, refining, and then ending up with what you need, you're taking in products that people are now recycling and extracting those same raw materials. However, there is a key difference. You already know what you've got in these prepackaged consumer products, right? It's a far more refined process. You're not sifting through as much BS. I know it might sound a little bit crazy, but the process of recycling is actually gonna be far more efficient overall than going and mining materials. The only problem is that right now, the ecosystem of batteries around the world isn't enough to create a closed loop where we no longer need to extract those resources from the earth. But that time will come. Fast forward five, 10, 15, 20 plus years, a lot of batteries are coming back from electric vehicles which have scaled up, a lot of batteries are coming back from stationary energy storage. Suddenly, we'll no longer need to extract more materials from the earth because there'll be enough batteries in the ecosystem that those materials can be recycled and refined ad infinitum. It's a closed loop system. Sort of a startling amount of phones. <laughs> this is a big bit of phones, man. Well, yes, yeah, <laughs> one of many. Redwood has a lot of batteries. I believe the technical term is a ton. Consumers send them in, so do companies. This is basically some of the incoming material that, that we get you know, from consumers. So you know, it's a whole variety of stuff. Just 18650s, scooter battery pack, even you know, power tool battery packs. It's like a, a power pack thing, you know, but this has a battery in it. So you know, it's, it's difficult to dispose of and we can recycle this for the materials. We're inventing the ways you know, that you can basically recycle this without having a human do it, because it's too small. I'm really excited to see how battery recycling technology evolves over the coming decade or so. At this point in time, the entire industry really is in its infancy because we aren't seeing enormous numbers of batteries coming back for recycling, yet. Redwood Materials appears to have an enormous first mover advantage. We're not gonna see the fruits of this early work yet, but as that tsunami of used batteries start coming back in from electric vehicles and stationary storage, especially towards the second half of this decade, Redwood Materials look like they're going to be in prime position. This could ultimately become a company worth tens of billions of dollars. How much lithium that's been used in here would you guys be able to recover? Like, what's the reuse percentage? On Almost all like of that? it. You know, lithium, maybe more than 80%. You know, nickel. 95 98 percent same with cobalt um, and copper so you know it's, it's a pretty complete process those are some really incredible material recovery rates the fact that any recycling process could be delivering you 90 95 plus percent of the material you're after originally so little waste is really impressive remember it's still early days 
Redwood gets devices, takes out the batteries, and then begins breaking them down into their elemental parts. This is largely done through heat. Serious heat. Which is why these spacemen are needed. They're using an oven to create what is basically metal magma, which then goes into a tub and is stirred with a rake. Because why not? Redwood then goes through chemical and other processes to end up here. Mounds of stuff that was once pulled from the ground and can now be reused. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had to guess, I'd probably guess that heating something up a little, giving it a bit of a stir and a little bit of refining, and I know I'm oversimplifying the process, but doing that to end up with your raw material, probably a little bit more efficient than digging a f off gigantic hole in the earth and then going through the process of extracting, refining, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Is recycling a battery with all the raw materials you already need probably going to be a simpler, more efficient and cost-effective process than going and digging it out of the ground? So we got some more metal over here. Yeah, this is just a, a, a small batch of lithium carbonate that we just made this morning. And this is sort of a, a chance to see you know, what the, the final product is and what lithium actually looks like you know, once you extract it from the batteries and separate it yeah. out. So. You know, this stuff is, is quite pure lithium carbonate. So this is actually the, the input precursor of how lithium gets you know, used and built back into batteries. It is pretty neat to see it separated like this and, and uh, you know, know that this came from batteries you know, that were you know, otherwise you know, garbage and otherwise wouldn't have been recovered. I mean, it's like the lithium, say it's been in my phone and you guys refine it. How many times can that happen? Can this just keep going on and on and on? <laughs> there, there's, no tip, there's no real limit to it. There's no degradation that happens to those atoms of lithium or cobalt or nickel. And it's one of the coolest things about this is that those metals are basically infinitely recyclable. Just to remind you guys again, once enough batteries are out into the ecosystem, we'll no longer need to be mining for materials because we'll have enough in the batteries that are already being used and coming back for recycling. And as JB pointed out, there's no degradation or loss at the atomic level. An atom of lithium is an atom of lithium. Doesn't matter how many batteries it's been through, how many lifetimes, how many iterations, it's that same lithium atom. Except for the small amounts that get lost in the recycling process itself, you can basically keep doing that again and again and again. So you can start to imagine a future where you're thinking, huh, like if we can do this a thousand times, you know, the need for mining new materials starts to dwindle. That's cool. After a hard day of alchemy, JB will head home and tend to his nerd garden. That might mean expanding the solar farm or fiddling with his homemade mountaintop internet repeaters. Or obviously, letting that still running sexy yellow roadster loose. Remember kids, study hard, work hard. Have an IQ at least three to four standard deviations above average. Find a super rich friend with a Mars fetish who believes in electric cars just as much as you do. And this can all be yours too. Well, I for one am extremely excited to watch Redwood Materials execute and refine their battery recycling process over the coming years. I really do believe that Redwood Materials are in an extremely strong position to take a disproportionately large percentage of the battery recycling market. Now, why would that be? There's very few others out there with the vision and the brains to actually pull this off. The battery recycling industry is going to absolutely explode, especially in the later half of this decade and beyond. At this point in time, I don't really see too many other companies making these same kind of moves. It's too early, but again, JB, long-term thinker, big vision. The dude was obsessed with EVs over 15 years ago. Next minute, look at what Tesla's doing. We're going to see the exact same process play out now with battery recycling, and I am very excited. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. There's a link in the description to the full video, and of course, please, please, please do yourself the favor. If you haven't already read or listened to the Ashley Vance Elon Musk biography, you are missing out. There's also a link in the description. As I mentioned, you can listen free with an audible trial, but at the end of the day, I don't care how or why, just read the damn book. And don't forget, if you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, 
Zealand. You can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.